have Catherine O'Day. If she's wonderful. Okay, uh, she is the executive director of Save Our Shores, a conservationist expert in plastic abatement in marine environments, and completed graduate studies in two programs at Harvard. Is the former senior director of innovations at greenblue.org and is a kayaker and your neighbor. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and also for having me here. I feel humbled as someone who's been on this planet for far more decades than the youth who are uh, really standing up and doing something brave and compassionate and much needed. <clears throat> I feel like my friend Richard here, I call him my friend, we've never met before, I feel the same need to apologize that my generation has failed uh, in making a difference in stopping climate change before it became a real crisis, and we are currently in a real crisis. But back to Save, the Shore, Save Our Shores for a minute and grassroots, and that's our story, right? So 40 years ago, Save Our Shores was formed by eight individuals who saw a threat of oil drilling actually off our coast. Fossil fuel, let's go get fossil fuel out of our ocean, right? <clears throat> and this community said no, and this community stood up and fought for that and su succeeded in stopping that threat. Forty years later, we're fighting that fight again. We have... I always have such a hard time talking about the administration in D.C. today. I try to be respectful and honor the White House, <laughs> the Oval Office, and the person in it, but I just cannot, I cannot respect that administration and the people that that administration or that individual who leads the administration has put in place. He's gone out of his way to find people who have absolutely no business being in government and no business being in the positions that they are. We had the head of the EPA who had sued the EPA 14 times. We have an energy secretary who I don't think can spell energy. <laughs> and it goes on. But in any case, <clears throat> Save Our Shores mission today is based on three primary pillars. We went through a strategic planning process a little over a year ago and we asked the question, what conditions would be most important for us if we were going to have a thriving Monterey Bay, which is really the reason we all live here, right? We live here because it's an ocean paradise. And those, th the three conditions we came up with were clean shores, healthy habitat, and living waters. And our living waters, that just sounds like a cool catchphrase, but you know it's really important, and this is where our organization is standing up and, and, and taking a position on climate change. We believe that we have to keep our ocean alive. And by doing that, we need to stop this climate threat. <clears throat> we have acidification, we have hypoxia in our ocean, we have rising sea levels. We're at a point of no longer climate, uh, climate uh, sort of stopping it, but we're, in the, we're at a point where we need to do climate adaptation and climate resiliency. And that's a very different strategy than stopping climate change. I always thought, you know, I've been working in the environmental field for about 35 years, dear God. Um, I always thought we would solve this problem and we would be able to move forward and kids from my generation, you know, my people who were parents in my generation, I have no kids, I have no grandchildren, and I still feel the need to protect this planet. It's not only about the kids and the youth having a, a quality of life in the future, but it's about the planet having a life. It's about our ocean having a life. And if we don't have a healthy ocean, we do not have life. 
So under our Living Waters pillar, we have created a climate change info hub that you can find on our website at simply www.saveourshores.org. And that climate change info hub is there to help people in our community understand what is happening in our community related to climate change, how it's affecting our Monterey Bay, how it's affecting the quality of life. We are trying to make it as interactive and engaging as possible. We have interviews with folks like Dr. Gary Griggs, who's, you know, well-respected, highly respected ocean scientist who's done a lot of studies in this area. We have the climate action uh, adaptation scenarios from Tiffany Wise West, our city sustainability manager. We have uh, interviews with other folks. We have links to studies. We have simplified narratives of you know, hard to understand studies that were out there. We will have curriculum for teachers. We're trying to build games for youth of all ages to better understand and interact with what does climate change mean and what's going to happen if we don't successfully deal with the situation. So I would encourage you all to visit our site, visit our info hub, and especially to the youth here today, I want to invite you to become participants in creating the content for that hub. I'd love for some of you to become bloggers, I'd love for some of you to become photographers, pictures that we can put up on that, on that site, and really be involved. Take an ownership of it, it's there for you, and I invite you to be part of that. And if you are interested in being a blogger, or a photographer, or a storyteller on that info hub, I invite you to contact our communications manager, whose name is Haley Allison, and is not with me today, but she really should be here today. And you can reach Haley at simply Haley, H-A-Y-L-E-Y, at saveourshores.org, and tell her you want to submit content for our info hub. Now the last thing that I want to say is I totally agree with nonviolence. I totally agree with love and compassion as the way to succeed. But I have to say, you know, I am angry. And I think you all should be angry. But I think we need to turn that anger into positive grassroots action like we're all doing here today. And I also want to say that, turn that anger into hope. You know, over the years, 35 years of working on the environment, I've had highs and lows, and I've had times of depression, and I've had times where I've even thought, well, fortunately, I'm going to be dead before it's really all that bad. But a lot of you are not. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you have a quality of life before I do pass on. And that's what I've been trying to do for 35 years with organizations like Save Our Shores. But you all need to carry that torch. And it is just so rewarding for me to stand here today and see that there is a next generation of ocean stewards, of climate stewards, of just environmental stewards and people who love planet Earth. So on a note of hope, which I hope our anger can all turn us towards hope, I read a book about five, maybe six years ago. It's called The Great Disruption. It's written by a fellow named Paul Gilding, and he used to be the head of Greenpeace in Europe, and then he became, of all things, a corporate consultant working with companies to help them figure out how to address issues like this. And so he wrote a book in about 2012 called, as I said, The Great Disruption. And it goes through the scenario of all these things that we're going to see happen and all the changes we're going to have to expect. But at the end of each chapter, he has a refrain. We're not stupid. We're just slow. And his hopeful comment is that when it reaches the real crisis point, America will stand up. 
and we will use our brains and our expertise and our hearts and our passion and we will find the answers. It's just that we're not stupid, we're slow. And I would like to suggest we need to get a little bit faster than we've been. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to the 21 students and youth who are standing up to the government. All of you stand up to the government. There is nothing more important we can do today than to vote. I've already voted. And we must change, we must change the administration in D.C. It's about our only hope. And if I could do a chant. Some of you will remember this from one of my favorite movies called Network. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell.